Sucker Punch shocked the world a year ago by delivering Ghost of Tsushima, an amazing game by all accounts, redefining the samurai genre, capturing the samurai combat to perfection while having arguably one of the most amazing and stunning looking open worlds. Yes, that's right, I'm not a big fan of open worlds, but even I have to stop in awe and look at the way the open world looks. It's absolutely beautiful. The number of times I would come to a vista as the sun rays broke through the trees or the horizon to give that picture perfect scene, and even the last time where I streamed a PS5 version of this game, as the sun broke the horizon, I just stood there and I was captivated at how beautiful this game looked. It, it really is a picture perfect game. The PS5 version of the game, of course, took an already amazing looking game and have made it look even better with dynamic 4K resolution talking at 60 FPS and I'll be honest with you, not once did I notice the frame rate ever drop in. I assume this is because of the checkerboard 4K, but I can live with that. There was also a ton of enhancements from the amazing haptic feedback, which I have to tell you is amazing. The adaptive triggers that work so beautifully, adding that tension you want to experience from the PS5 controller to super fast loading. And I'm not joking here, the load time well fast you couldn't even see a loading screen every time i died it was just instant i was back it was so quick it was great even people in the chat when i was streaming this game were shocked at just how fast the loading was they added cinematic lip syncing animations for japanese voiceover settings as well i did try this out i'm i prefer the english voice acting just so i don't have to read subs i do a lot of that when i'm watching anime but with this game, I just want to be able to be immersed by what I'm playing and seeing, so I left it in English, so that didn't bother me, but it's good that they did it. Did they really need to go all the way to the PS5 to get that done? Probably not, but it's there anyway. To top it off, you also have the amazing 3D audio support, and let me tell you, as you're turning that camera around, the sound rotating around your head is amazing. I use the official PS5 wireless headphones, and it is amazing. Just listening to all that sound happening as you're turning the camera slowly around, you, you, you just get that 360 immersion that you want, and it makes a big difference as you're immersing yourself into this beautifully story-driven game. But ultimately, outside of the quality of life updates and the graphics being enhanced, especially the lighting, the base game is the same. There's no difference between the PS4 version and the PS5. What the director's cut brings is Ghost of Tsushima's first paid DLC, which I'll be referring to as Ghost of Ikishima. Now, obviously it's Iki Island that we are going to, but I just prefer to call it Ghost of Ikishima because it just works. And I have to say, that I hope we see more updates and bigger biomes in the future. When you ask someone what they want from an update to Ghost of Tsushima, you'll hear more Ghost of Tsushima, which is exactly what I wanted. You just want more. Tweak the gameplay, add more progression and a couple of skills. Essentially, just updating the game, bringing in another meaningful great story, improving on the already amazing gameplay and delivering another fantastic experience. And that is exactly exactly what this update does. It doesn't revolutionize the game, it just takes the experience that you have and then gives you more of it in a better way. The new DLC brings a new island to the game, a vast open world different enough yet familiar. It brings a new story which delves into Jin's past, bringing a much needed deeper character development for Jin. As you start the DLC expansion, Jin discovers a group of Mongols led by a woman named Eagle who are planning to invade Tsushima. So he sets out to Ikishima to prevent this from happening. I won't delve further into it as it gets into heavy spoiler areas and honestly, it's an experience you should experience yourself. It gets crazy and wacky, but that's the whole charm of it and it's definitely worth the play through. The DLC assumes you have finished the base game and the events do take place after the Ghost of Tsushima has been completed. So do keep that in mind if you decide to access the DLC early as it is open to you from Act 2 though I would highly recommend finishing the base game before traveling to Ikishima. As with a new area, you can expect more secrets, collectibles, as well as new armor to collect, so it's just what the doc ordered. More Tsushima, and who can say no to more Tsushima? I will add that if you do decide at Act 2 to venture into the new area, you do need to get a bit into the DLC before you can actually get the fast travel option open again. So do keep that in mind that if you do venture into Ikishima, as soon as you're there, you won't be able to leave. And the game does warn you of this, so keep that in mind. 
Of course, as with the original, the best part of the expansion is the new island itself. It's the blank canvas filled with the fog of war, waiting to be explored and for you to discover the secrets that the island is hiding. The moment you set foot in Iki Island, you are free to set off in any direction to discover its many landmarks, areas of interest, and some cool easter eggs that are littered around the area. You'll have seen many of these landmarks before, they're identical in kind to the main campaign, like the bamboo shoots or the hot springs and even the amazing haiku spots. What I will add is that the DualSense controller just shines so brightly with the haiku spots. Just if you are using it and you've got everything enabled, just listen to your controller. It's beautiful and the, the whole vibration tone on the controller is amazing. It really sets the serenity. They put a lot of attention into how these scenes play out and it paid off. It's just the immersion factor alone is brilliant. There are two new additions as well, including archery challenges and animal sanctuaries. I spent about what 20 minutes at one of them petting the kittens. It was awesome. I absolutely loved it and I just didn't want to leave the kittens. Unlike the foxes which you pet and then they run off, these kittens they're needy and they just sit there waiting for you to pet them over and over again and it is so charming and it's lovely to see that in this day and age in a video game. It's something that so many players want and yet so many developers miss the mark. Yet yeah, with Iki Island and Ghost of Tsushima the developers came true and delivered in spades. You've also got playable flashbacks, which is cool because they delve into Jin's past, his background and develop his character that bit more. You also have a handful of side quests as well as two mythic tales, which I can say are awesome and have worthwhile rewards, even if you have collected every single armor in the base game, because the perks are pretty damn sweet. And no, I won't be spoiling them to you. Ikea Island adds two new enemy types, a shaman which sings, buffing nearby allies but they are also quite tankish and not weak like archers. They're annoying but you do need to deal with them because the buff they put on two enemies defensively is quite powerful. Also they hit quite hard and they're enraged all the time so taking him out is always going to be your first point of call. Another is a dual wielding enemy type which switches between sword and shield and spear forcing you to change your stance as you play mid combat. Originally this actually caught me off quite badly and I took a beating because of it because I was trying to deflect or you know break their shield while in a wrong stance. It's nothing drastic, but it's cool to see that the enemies actively switching to defend themselves. Overall, it just adds a bit more to the challenge and keeps you on your toes. Finally, we can't end a review without talking about your trusty steed and its awesome new ability. Yes, your steed is now useful in combat and it's a great addition to the game. Again, nothing over the top, but it's just there and it's new and it's fun. As you're sprinting into enemies holding the L1 button, you plow into enemies taking them out. It's awesome and it's super satisfying as the, the action just slows down as you just crunch through each one. Overall, Iki Island is exactly what you expect from a Ghost of Tsushima game. It's just giving you more Tsushima. The music, the serenity, the secrets, the quests, the story, it's all there. The voice acting, the tension, the character building, it's all there. Being able to dive into Jin's past and learn more about him is amazing. It's exactly what you would want from an expansion. So to conclude, the game is about 8 hours long with some exploration. There's no way anyone's gonna, you know, do a linear path straight for it. But it, you know, there may be someone out there that wants to do that. So it's shorter if you follow the main path. However, it's about 10 to 12 hours if you want 100%. I'd say a maximum of maybe about 14 hours. But 10 to 12 hours is the sweet spot, I reckon, if you want 100% the game. Ghost of Ikishima, the new expansion, doesn't make a giant leap over its original counterpart. But at the same time, it doesn't have to. The original already set a very high bar so all Ikishima really had to do was improve on what was already great and Sucker Punch did just that and if they did this with the director's cut I'm super excited to see what they will do with Ghost of Tsushima 2 if it ever materializes for next generation consoles. If you're looking for more Ghost of Tsushima action, samurai action and combat and story and serenity and secrets and puzzles and combat and, and everything Ghost of Tsushima brings to the table then this update 
this director's cut with all its quality of life updates and new DLC as well as the Legends mode that we haven't yet talked about because that is coming two months from now and it's going to have new modes, new features as well which is going to expand the game even more than it already is is an easy recommendation from me. And with the upgrade paths that you have of £30 to upgrade from the standard version to the director's cut version, it's a no brainer. It's worth every penny and is an absolute easy recommendation from me. Thank you so much for watching my review of Ghost of Tsushima Director's Cut. With the promise of pears or dry melons, then lied to my father and said we'd studied all afternoon. She told me sometimes living is more important. Thanks so much for watching my video. If you look over to the left, you'll find a video that I'm recommending to you that I think you might actually enjoy. On the right, you'll see a video that is recommended by YouTube. I really do hope you enjoyed the video and until the next one, remember to always remain legend.